great to be here, and it's always amusing that when you come to tech events, you can tell because I'm the only guy in the, with a tie on except for the security guards. <laughs> so this is a celebration of you, a celebration of your success, and for those of you who didn't pay attention, about a month ago there was a new report out from BC Stats about the state of the sector. So the current state of the sector, $23 billion in sales, $6.5 billion in wages and salaries. 7.6% of this entire economy comes from you folks. That's huge. You're bigger than forestry, mining, and petroleum combined. Your wages are running about 77% above service sector wages and economy as a whole. So if you throw into that service sector economy as a whole, it ranges from Starbucks to KPMG. So your wage levels are way, way above the average, and we love you for it. <laughs> And so with that kind of background, that tribute to your success, what do we do? Well, we focus on four sectors. Biotech, there'll be a couple of folks here from that sector. The clean energy sector, which is very diverse, and maybe some of those folks here. Digital media, there'll be a couple of folks here. But the big one is ICT, Information Communications Technology. And you folks are just cutting through the tape and getting to the markets at an amazing rate in recent years. We have the, the local homegrown talent, companies like Hootsuite, we have all the foreigner companies coming in, like Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and we encourage them not to steal the talent that most food suite has grown locally. But this is a very hot climate now for incoming employers, because they can see the talent in the room, in the community, and they know that this is a place where they can actually build and get things done. So this is a very, very attractive proposition for government. So what do we do about it? Well, we focus on four components in this. Talent, ideas, capital and markets. So what do we do about that? The talent side is basically advanced education sector. And there is a burning need for our universities and colleges to figure out that there is a hot market to take undergraduates, whether they're colleges or universities, and give them a credit course in coding. They can finish their degree with a coding course and come straight into the job market. So we're working on that right now. Ideas, we turn to you for that because you're the people with the fertile minds, you're the people who are building this sector, and you're doing a wonderful job of it. We cannot compliment you enough. Capital, we have the Small Business Venture Capital Program that we operate to provide seed money, for angel investors get a 30% tax credit up to a certain amount, and a company can apply for a total of about $5 million in credits. So that's where we get companies off the ground. We like to think that's into the kind of up to 10 employees stage. And then there's certain kind of that difficult spot where the company says, gosh, this is getting scary, I've got five or six employees, can I afford to pay them? Maybe I should get a job at Hootsuite, or just sell out to Hootsuite, or uh, maybe take over Hootsuite. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where we're running into the issue with the federal government, we're working very actively on this, about access to capital for those higher level financings. What's, for those of you who know, mezzanine financing, Series A, Series B financing. That's where we have a bit of work to do in this environment. The last one is markets, and that's where we have a couple of vehicles working on that. First of all, we have the Ministry of International Trade, and they do what they can in other markets to point to the success stories here, point to the opportunities here. We're working on a big procurement initiative, much like the federal one that was just described, so that if you have a product or an idea that is suitable for the marketplace, we're interested. Traditionally, governments, particularly the BC government, has been very risk averse, saying, well, we don't want to get into anything novel or new or scary because we might make a mistake and it could cost the taxpayer $25. Yeah. We're trying to reverse that, that uh, attitude so we can say, if this is a product that is useful to us, tell us more. We're also simplifying the procurement so that under a certain dollar value, we're going from 80 pages of documentation to two. So this is I love coming to this And then last but not least, we have a very important organization that helps young companies to figure out what their markets are, figure out what their pitch is, figure out where they're going to fit into the marketplace. That's BC Innovation Council. So for those who don't know, Greg Cause is going to stand up right now. He's going to stand up. Yeah.